the first uh, thing that we'll talk about under quadratic is the method of completing the square. So you did this. I'm just adding uh, some properties here. So you guys were able to solve this. Uh, Bx plus c is equal to zero. And the result came out to be x is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we'll start from the nature of the roots. In the roots falls under uh, three cases. Case one. So if you say D represent B squared minus 4AC. This formula here, and the formula is going to be X is equal to negative D plus or minus the root D of 2A. Root of D over 2A. Then if D, if D is equal to zero, what is the nature of the roots? So if D is zero, what we have is this X is equal to negative D plus or minus the root of zero over 2a. This will be negative b over 2a. We only have one value of x. Because it was x squared, we expected to have two values of x. So for it to be one, it means that we had two except they were equal. So you say we get equal uh, two roots. One. Two, if d is greater than zero, for example, uh, if we have negative D plus or minus the root of four, four is bigger than zero uh, over two A. This is going to be negative B plus two over two A or negative B minus two over two A. So we'll get two values of X. So we'll say two, those values of X are real numbers, so two real, distinct roots. They are two and they are different. The third case, if D is less than zero, an example, we have D plus or minus root negative three over two A. These are cases when we say we don't have roots. What does it mean? We have imaginary roots. The fourth one, is a combination of one and two greater or equal to zero. This will mean we have real roots. We won't say, case four does not say if they are real equal, real distinct. It just says they are real. Just combined one and two. That is the first thing here. Second thing, we we'll talk of the sum and product of the roots. The sum and product, so let me get back. So I remove now this piece. How many roots do we have here? We are saying one, X is equal to negative B plus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Or x is equal to negative b minus the root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. If we say this is alpha and this is beta, those are just names that we are giving to the same roots of x that we know. And then you want to see what happens if we add root one, which I've called alpha, and root two, which I've called, called theta. To add this, we have a common denominator, which is 2a. So you put 2a down, and then you get 2a in itself. We'll get negative b plus b squared minus ac, and then minus 
b minus root b squared minus 4ac. As you can see, this piece will cancel this one. So we'll get negative 2b over 2a, giving us negative b over a. So we'll say the two roots, the sum is negative b over a. We now look for the product. If we multiply them, alpha, beta, we're talking of negative b plus root of b squared minus 4ac multiplied by negative b minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a over 2a. So uh, when expanding negative b times negative b, b squared, negative b times negative root, we get plus b root and plus root minus b, we get minus b root. Then plus root times negative root, we get negative. And then root times root of the inside, we get the same thing. Uh, we'll get the same thing, which is a, uh, which will be B squared minus four AC. Then it has a negative outside. So if you expand the negative, you get negative B squared plus four AC over two A times two A, we get four A squared. Then as we can, this is positive, this is negative positive, negative. So in the numerator, we remain with 4ac. In the denominator, we remain with 4a times a. So this means that a, a will cancel, 4, 4 will cancel, then we'll get c over a. Like that. So we are saying the product is then C of, C of A. So very important to know these so that we can now do examples based on, based on this one. Do I have these people? Joshua, Esther, Barry. Oh, Barry is here. Esther. Yes, I can get you, sir. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were still facing the challenge. So I picked some examples that um, in line with what we are doing from tutorial sheet three. Examples. The first one, use completing the square. Is equal to zero. So, uh, so here I think we just do one. So to do this, the first step so the first step uh, solution You have 2x squared plus 12x plus 5 is equal to 0. Because we have a 0 on the right, the first step is to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So that we remain with x squared 
uh, plus 6x plus 5 over 2 is equal to 0. The second step, you divide the coefficient of x by 2. So we get x squared plus 6x uh, plus 6 divided by 2. So 6 divided by 2, we get 3. So you bring 3 here and you square it. And then subtract 3, square it. And then plus 5 over 2 is equal to 0. Then you put these together by writing x plus 3. The 3 which is being squared, before you square it, you take it in the brackets and you square it together with x. Then the remaining two you take in the other side. They'll go as positive nine and minus five over two, which is giving us x plus three squared is equal to two down 18 minus five. This is x plus three squared is equal to 18 minus five, we get 13 over two. Then you square root, you square root. So when you square root, you get plus or minus. So this will give us x plus three is equal to plus or minus the root of 13 uh, over two. Implying that x is equal to negative three plus root 13, uh, over root two, or oh, x is equal to minus three, minus root 13, uh, over root two. You can also write this as negative three plus the root of 13 over two, as negative three minus the root of 13 over two. We can do that. That is when you have zero the other side. If I don't have zero, like question 6C, if we don't have zero, we have example two, say, let f of x, Thank you. So let f of x be equal to negative two x squared plus two x plus one be a quadratic function. one by completing the square express f of x in the form In the form f of x is equal to a x plus p squared plus q, where a p q are constants. Two state the maximum or the minimum point 
of F three sketch F of X. This question is expected in the test. The only thing that might change here I, is, is, is the function f of x. This, the instructions may be the same. It's a very serious examinable question. Most expected in test one. Part one, complete the square. So f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. There is no zero here. So it's different from this one, which had zero. If there is no zero, then what do I do? I don't divide the two throughout till it disappears. OK, I just keep the two outside x squared so that I remain with x squared here and then divide it inside plus one over negative two, which becomes negative two x squared minus x minus half, like that. Then this is two outside as you pick x, squared minus x plus divide the coefficient of x by two. The coefficient of x here is negative one. So we divide negative one by two and then square it and subtract negative one over two squared. Then we have the negative one over two, that, that was c. Then now write, this x and this minus half squared. Then minus, expand this, becomes positive one over four, then minus half. Then put this together, you get negative two, x minus half squared. So we have four down. Uh, plus four into four, we get one. So we have negative one minus two into four. We get two by one, we have two, which we write as negative. As we expand, negative two times the brackets here, it remains negative two and the brackets like this, then negative two. Remember negative one minus two is just negative three. So we have negative three over four times negative two to become plus first thing and then three up then two into four it goes twice this expression is in the form that is asked no one has said you should mention what a p q r you just express it like that Hello. Mm, how did you get How did we get? Supposed to be negative three over four, then we multiply it by negative two. It's 
So negative, negative, two here, one, two here, two. So it becomes three over two. Oh, okay. Then we go to part two, state the maximum or the minimum point of F. You start by checking what A is. So A is negative two, which is less than zero. If A is less than zero, then you have the maximum, the maximum point, which is equal to, you pick the inside of the brackets, X minus half and equate to zero. You find the X coordinate, X is equal to half. So you put half here, comma. Then you pick this number that is alone here. You keep this sign. It becomes the y coordinate, positive three over two. Together, that is the maximum point. To sketch part three, you need since you already have the maximum point, you need the turning. You need the Y intercept. The Y intercept. You got the function F, where there is X, you take zero. So you will get one because you have zero here, zero here, plus one, you get one. The point is zero comma one. Then from there, what do we get? You need the x intercepts now. By equating this to zero, so you say negative two x minus half squared uh, plus three over two is equal to zero. It has now become a quadratic equation. So you can now start solving. So you take this other side, you get negative two. Uh, x minus half squared is equal to negative three over two, divide by neg two, divide by neg two. So we'll get x minus half squared is equal to positive three over four. Then you square root, you square root. So you get x minus half is equal to plus or minus the root of three. The root of four is two giving us x is equal to half uh, plus root three over two, or x is equal to half minus root three over two. Then we sketch. So to sketch, um, the turning point is half, comma three over two. And it's maximum. The intercept is zero comma one. So you come like this. This is one. This one here between this and this one. So it will be half minus root three over two. So I've got the question. Mm -hmm. um, is it okay when you want to find the X coordinate, you equate all the equation to zero, then the one you cross it to the other side? Mm -hmm. You can, solve, you can solve that equation in any way. All right. As long as you keep in mind that it is a quadratic. So what is negative three over two divided by negative two? Let's check. 
What is negative root three? Negative three over two divided by negative two. It's positive three over four. It is negative three over two divided by negative two over one, which is the same as negative three over two times negative one over two. So negative three times negative three, you get three, two times two, four. So this is positive one over two plus the root of three uh, over two. So it means this one has been fully answered. That's how you expect this question in the test as question two or three. So, Hello. This is how we answer if you're, if you're not, uh, if this equation is not uh, equated to zero. Now, mm -hmm. what if in a case whereby it's equated to zero and you're told to graph like this, how do you do with uh, the first number? If it's equated to zero and they ask you to sketch, we don't ask you to sketch an equation. You understand? Yes, I said they can't ask me to to graph the, the equation which is equated to zero, not so. No. Oh, thank you. Because if you are to sketch, because this means this equation means x intercept. So you only have two numbers, one to put here, one to put here. That's all. That's what the equation means. Thank you. Uh, so um, how did you find the zero comma one in the sketching? To find the y-intercept, to find the y-intercept everywhere in this world, x is to be zero. Because we say, this is zero comma zero. So X is zero throughout the Y intercept, I mean the Y axis. Y is zero throughout the X axis. So when you say Y intercept, you are looking for a point where X is going to be zero. So when X is zero, what is the output of the function? It is one, that's how I get the intercept. Is it okay? It is. Good. So guys, listen. If you take his week, you write a message. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is that we have two intercepts. To find the y intercept, you make x zero. Write zero where there is x in the function. Then you'll find a point where the graph touches the y axis. If you want to find where the graph touches the X axis, we call that the X intercept. To find the X intercept, make Y zero. That's why you equate the whole quadratic to zero. It becomes an equation. Then you solve for X values. Always. At least here on A, 
Hadi zaten diyor bu. So sir, we must substitute the zero into the original function. Yes. Okay. To find what? The x values. To find the y intercept. Okay, okay, so. Yes. And how do you find the x intercepts? We we'll make y is zero. We make y is zero, which is the f of x. That's what we do there. Okay, so we still have a lot to do. Uh, we are logging out. Uh, we cool down for 10 minutes. Log back. We now want to see how to apply those rules and the conditions given on the uh, discriminant. So this is the 19. Hope you're recording. Yes. This is 1946 or uh, 47. Okay. So at the 20 hours sharp, let's look back. Same ring. 